Good evening. Uh, my name is James Lafferty. I'm the chairman of the Virginia Anti-Sharia Task Force. And I'm going to ask uh, people who are opposed to the uh, Saudi Academy expansion to please stand. Thank you. Thank you. Our concern, sir, which Mr. Murphy of the Planning Commission has called a distraction, is that there is an institution operating in our community right now which is raising the next generation of terrorists. We believe that the Islamic Saudi Academy is not only teaching Sharia law, it is practicing Sharia law. And the, the best example of that is the applicant who's listed on this application tonight, Mr. Al Shabnan. Uh, he is the principal at the Islamic Saudi Academy, and when a child there complained of being assaulted by a, a parent, uh, Mr. Al Shabnan didn't follow Sharia law, didn't follow Virginia law, he followed Sharia law. He turned the little uh, child back to the parent and said, you've got to get this one under control. To your credit and to the credit of the Fairfax County Police, he was arrested and found guilty of that. But he was following Sharia law. And that is the law which is followed within the walls of the Islamic Saudi Academy. Why is, is Sharia law a religious law? Is, are we objecting to religion? Absolutely not. But we do object to any teaching which counters the Constitution of the United States. It is ironic that in a state which had so much to do with the writing and the preparation of the Constitution, a government here would permit an institution which is trying to tear the Constitution down, trying to use its protections to protect their activity, that we would tolerate that. We would let them use government facilities, and we would even send out invitations for events related to, the, to their operation. Um, the Sharia law is, is a, a system which allocates rights according to gender and religion, strictly. Uh, all of you who are familiar with the Constitution of the United States know that at least at our very best, we try to allocate rights to individuals regardless of their religion and regardless of, of what their gender is or anything else, any of those other characteristics. That's not the case under Sharia law. It is a very dangerous, in terms of the threat it poses to the Constitution and our way of government. And we are deeply disappointed that, uh, that when we try to talk to you about this, the first time I came here to testify, I was called a bigot and a slanderer. Um, we're deeply disappointed that people who present evidence, as the International Commission of Religious Freedom did, we presented that the documents that they had gotten, which talked about killing Jews, talked about assaulting Christians, talked about what happens if someone leaves Islam, that they should be, uh, should be dealt with severely, and even talked about stoning. Now, I don't understand how that exists here in Fairfax County. If there is not something that you can do with the zoning, there must be something else that you can do to protect our citizens and to protect our country. These are the same people that a lot of young Virginians are over there fighting and dying against, and we're over here nurturing it and defending it. Free speech does not include the right to set, tell someone to kill someone. That is not protected under the Constitution. And to sit here and to have to face many of you who will talk about me after I'm finished tonight and, put, and compare me to the, say that the Catholic Church is the same as this. That is, that, I mean, let's talk about bigotry. This is, a, this is, not, a, this is not religious speech. This is hate speech. And those of us who have stood up and called it by its name are now criticized as being bigots. We're deeply disappointed. We're particularly disappointed in the activity of Sandra B. Chisholm, a county employee, 
who sent out an invitation to a free dinner. You know about Sandra Chisholm, so I, and I hope to see you take some action on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate this opportunity to testify before you regarding the expansion of the Islamic Saudi Academy, which is funded and controlled by the Saudi government. I am Andrew Lafferty. I am the Executive Director for the Traditional Values Coalition. We work with over 43,000 churches across the country and speak on behalf of millions of Americans. I am also a resident of Fairfax County. We, we're going to hear a lot of, of the term land use tonight be tossed around concerning the traffic and pollution problems which the Saudi plan will inflict on the neighbors of the Pope's Head area of our county. I don't think you can talk about this expansion plan or any other plan for that matter put forward by the Saudis unless you talk about the specific use of the land. How could you discuss Belvoir without discussing the fact that it's a military installation? How can you talk about National Park without discussing baseball? This is the second time that I've appeared before you, um, the third before the county. The last two times, as mentioned before, we were treated incredibly disrespectfully and called names like slanderer. Although, Mr. Cook, you weren't here, so I you were keep from that. Uh, last year we raised the same issues which have been documented by the International Commission on Religious Freedom and numerous newspapers and yet were called bigots and hate-filled, as I said, by many of you sitting before me. So let me see. We have several independent parties who produce textbooks and hard facts that hatred for Jews and Christians is being taught at the ISA. And when we bring to your attention this fact, you instantly accuse us of bigotry and ignore the teaching at the ISA. And remember Mr. Connolly, when he was chairman, he trotted down his star witness, who a short time later, as you heard earlier, was arrested for not reporting child abuse. Are you going to trot down someone else tonight like that, another star witness, and then again call us bigots, slanders, and hateful people? But again, the principal uh, was doing what he's supposed to do, and that is promote Sharia law at the Islamic Saudi Academy. So let's talk about the curriculum. Every time they get caught, they say, oh, sorry, we'll fix it. We'll tear out a page, we'll white out a section of it, and everything's okay. It's okay that we're still teaching children that it's okay to kill adulterers. It's okay to kill people who are infidels or people who are apostates and leave the faith. I guess that's okay with you. But we must remember that a majority of 9-11 hijackers were educated in Saudi schools with the same textbooks that are being used here in Fairfax County. It's very sad, but what's being taught is these kids are being told in order to safeguard your religion, you have to physically eliminate someone else. And that peaceful coexistence isn't okay with infidels like us. The ISA is not a private school or a charter school. It's a school operated by a foreign government, a government which bans any display of religious worship or speech other than Islam. This ideology is introduced in the textbooks very early and continued on through 12th grade. Saudi Arabia, as we have reminded you before, is consistently rated in the bottom percentile by human rights organizations such as Freedom House and Amnesty International. It's been given the designation of countries of particular concern by the bipartisan U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. It probably won't um, be tonight, but will there be some in the future when you actually address the well-documented, hate-filled teachings at the academy instead of reflexively attacking those citizens who laid the facts before you. You took an oath to support the Constitution, and we hope that you will do that. Um, it is too much to, ex or is it too much to expect that while young Americans are dying overseas, you might actually speak against and not provide support to those who are busy here in Virginia raising the next generation of very dangerous young people. 